mm -hmm. between the, the, the Echo Fighter and the, the the opposite. Yep, the other Echo. The mirror. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not really a mirror. I guess, I guess mirrors and dittos also have completely different connotations in fighting games. So mm -hmm. we're just going to get right down to business, guys, as we try to stall for more time <laughs> into, this, uh, into this game one. But okay, it looks like it's going to be Goblin starting off with the big hits, 44%, and continuing the string here with that upbeat. Absolutely. And we see uh, Sayuki fighting right back here. Very good damage, getting about the same. Yeah, that little eruption from Crown looks like it's able to two-frame up pretty effectively against the recovery of Goblin if he's off on the timing. But oh, taking a page out of Matty G's playbook with the jab Who's forward the smash. Jer? There's no Jer, it's just jab forward smash. <laughs> jab forwards. I commentated so many Matty G sets at Frostbite because he just kept winning. But okay, speaking of winning right back, but, oh, jeez, that double edge dance, almost enough to take a stock. And, oh, oh, that was perfect. You see that spacing that he set up with that up and knowing that Goblin was going to go for that counter? Mm -hmm. You need a space that brilliantly to the side. Okay, there's your Jair. There's the Jair. You're welcome. <laughs> Goblin heard you from all the way across the venue. Absolutely. Like, you want a Jair? You got a Jair, baby. Want a Jair? I got it. All right, so just playing out neutral in you know, a Pokemon Stadium 2. Pretty, uh, pretty common stage to start on. Really feel out your opponent, you know? Uh, don't forget Goblin, the thwacked champion. Oh, uh, yes. Actually winning the most recent major tournament that uh, the UGS Gaming folk have run. He won that over Yeti, and he won that over Nem. He won that over a ton of killers in that bracket. So he's looking to uh, continue his championship reign in this venue. I love that parry and up. He's getting a lot of guaranteed percent uh, just for calling out one approach on your shield. I think like 26%. The, the, <laughs> really the Krom up E, it's yeah. so nutty how much damage that does. But okay, the patience in the ledge going to pay off for Goblin, at least right now. And look at him just wait. Yep. Jer, and then he waits dead. and he gets the Jair as well. That's, that's just such a good confirm. I don't want to say it's non-committal, but it's pretty non-committal just to jab. You got to get the sweet spot, though. Yeah, for Roy, it's a little bit more committal because, again, the, the the whole design philosophy of Roy, okay, this is actually a dead crumb, but... Yes, sir. And, okay, that the double it. dip to make sure. I love seeing that here mm -hmm. from Goblin because, like, sometimes the aerial drift can be turned around by the air dodges or things like that from Crom. Mm -hmm. That can really help you save your bacon on those recoveries. But Goblin knew as soon as that air dodge was expended, he could dump, jump down there really without any consequence at all and yeah. finish the stock. I mean, Sayuki didn't have another jump, so he literally had to air dodge there if he wanted to make it back. You knew that slight momentum towards the stage, and you are forced to air dodge there, forced vulnerability, and Goblin knows how to edge guard his own character. <laughs> yeah, he, he understood exactly how to make sure that Sayuki paid with his life and with the game. If so. I recall correctly, I do believe that Goblin used a good amount of Krom when he went to wave the wheat down in Kansas. Uh, I want to say back in... Early, Goblin early, used Krom at... Whacked, actually. Oh, he, he did. He wanted. He said that at the time he uh, thought Crom might be more useful versus Mega Man specifically. I remember that interview actually in these very chairs. Interesting. Um, huh. I, I couldn't tell you the specifics of that lo of the logic mm -hmm. behind it, but uh, he does know both characters very, very well. So, what do you want to see from Sayuku going into this game? Uh, I mean, really, other than getting edge guarded, I mean, Goblin had some very good conversions, calling him out of ledge. What would you like to see from Sayuku this game? I don't know, man. Just press buttons better. <laughs> these, <laughs> press these, better buttons. These, these are two of the premier mashers in Smash Ultimate. And you uh -huh. just gotta, you gotta get in there. And <laughs> you'd be, a lot of the time, like just winning one 50-50 interaction on a shield can turn around the momentum so hard in these matchups, right? That's, that's so, so true. Especially with characters as explosive as these two right here. And we, we know Sayuki can extend his punish game very, very far, because we've seen it so many times. And look at that. There you go. Another jab to back air. Uh, that's go. only like the 98th time we've seen that happen <laughs> in this game. I'm actually surprised we've only seen that, what, once? Three times. Three, tw two, oh, no, two times. Four? Two times. That, that's actually four, because uh, Sayuki got one. You got the jab to forward smash. Oh, yeah, jab to forward. So that's three times. Three yeah. times total so far. Of for the, the amount of stocks lost, that's a, that's a pretty good ratio, especially for these characters. Yeah, uh, five stocks taken, though. Six stocks taken, now that's four. Yep. So we're at a 66% <laughs> clip, which makes makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, that is a really good kill option, especially... Oh, no. Jump save the whole way, and not enough time to turn around this counter. I think he needed to B reverse the down B, and I think that cost him some valuable time for Goblin to it's make sure that the stock is taken. Terrifying being at ledge against Krom's up B. Yes, you can counter it. Yes, it's pretty easy to edge guard, but if you miss time that... Have you seen the this, like the clips of people getting oh. yoinked at zero by yeah. it? <laughs> They're standing mid... like not want to say mid-stage, but close enough to where they shouldn't be getting hit by it. If you pay attention to Smash Ultimate for, like, a weekend, you see that. <laughs> that's exactly. Just, yeah. That's something that happens so commonly, and mm -hmm. just, it's, it's a little bit of crown privilege, Ooh. if there ever was a crown privilege. But let's see if he can make it happen. No. no. Not no, the perfect can't. spacing we saw in Game 1 on that recovery, and that's going to cost uh, Sayuki his second stop. That's a little whack. 
But he's, he's, okay, Goblin's fine. I actually thought he was he was gonna lose that stock there from center stage on town from, I think, a back air. Just at, like, sub 100%. This is a really good position for Goblin to be in. With that amount of rage, he can really extend his combos and get more than he can without that rage. That's a, that's a big factor in this game. But he's gonna lose it immediately, because yep. forward tilt, again, just so many non-committal kill options for Corellum, right? Really, really, any of these swords have just a lot of easy ways to take these stocks. And look at these parries back and forth. All right. Oh, man. Oh, Ch my goodness. Shouts to 4C Joe. Is this third strike we're watching right now? I mean, I saw a tweet recently. It was some, some sortie, you know, playing against a... They said, come on. What? Oh, my God. He read him from last week. Last week, Goblin woke up in the middle of the night, and he's like, this guy's going to roll in on me. I'm thinking about it. And I, I've got what? it written down in my little notebook. He wrote it down in his dream journal. 